partner in crime over today bro i got Stu right dude, here look, look at Stu just locking arms with you hand in hand start the dude, show dude he locks in on that window right there and i crack it once a day it gets good air into this basement you've been down here it's right. a basement so oh, yeah, yeah he goes up there and he just freaking tries to poke his head through the thing trying to get squirrels and stuff but he's here he's chilling with us today guys <laughs> he's a handsome cat isn't he i want i want to see i want to see how long he goes Stu will stay there for <laughs> it's gonna be a while. He's gonna try to either get on me or he's gonna step on my uh roadcaster and start playing music. So <laughs> everybody be ready for that. Hey, dude, I'm exhausted, dude. I worked all night with the 30 13, but dude, Super Bowl. I'm I'm gonna I'll start. I'm gonna start because I'm gonna say like uh maybe a controversial thing. Uh oh, so right know. out the gates we're going controversy. Yeah, ready? Jeez. Kids out there right now who are fans, what, when's your best fandom? Like fifth grade through like eleventh grade, or you're the biggest fan of your teams, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Probably Kids, you're looking at this generation's Michael Jordan and Patrick Mahomes. Whoa. Yes, I say that. I didn't think I would ever see somebody like this again, but he is the Michael Jordan of football. Dude. I, I, I honestly I can't disagree. I can't disagree. I love what he said last night, too. They were afterwards, Jim Nance was like, how'd you feel about, you know, being the underdogs the last three games? Here? And he says, just want to let everybody know the Kansas City Chiefs are never underdogs. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> you know, I turned to Jess right before the game. I'm so proud. I, I, have, a, I have a wife who loves like, sports. So I yeah. go into the game. By the way, she won a five hundred dollar box. She had zero zeros. So she got zero zero, dude. Dude, uh, Lambuski and I, we watched the game together. I was, we were talking about that, like the zero zero box. It's a it's disaster of a box, and yeah. these people won money on it last night. But so, I'm, I'm, when they were coming out, if you notice, think about the the vicinity of where that game was. There were so many Niners fans there because That's California right. to That's Vegas right. is just hop, yeah. skip, and a jump. And when they came out, when they came and they're waiting in a tunnel to come out, which I can only assume is the craziest experience of your life, of right. anyone's lives. Um, but they're waiting in a tunnel to come out, and they announced the Chiefs, and the booze started going. Right. And Mahomes was in the front of the line, and he smiled, and he just went like this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, this is like when Hulk Hogan turned into a bad guy. But you were still like... Okay, I got to go for Hollywood Hulk Hogan because he's like the story of my life, my childhood. I'm going to figure out I might like bad guys now. And it kind of, I loved it. It kind of gave him an edge because he's such a soft spoken guy. You know, everybody's making fun of him because he sounds like Kermit the Frog, which he does, and he admitted. But like, right. but like he is a bad mf -er, man. You, you played a professional sport, Sean, to dominate a sport to dominate, to be the best at a sport at the professional level. How, like, just tell me what you think about yeah. him and, and, and what this team is doing and what they've done and how hard that is in sports is my top. I think the biggest thing changed what hits me is confidence. This guy, you know, when he does that, it's real. It's like, it's like the old saying, Hey, listen, we're going to come in there. We know we're the best. They know we're the best. We're going to lock horns and we're going to kick their butts. And they're going to know that, we're, you know, there's, you know, they already know we're the best. Like that's when I look at my home, I'm like, he's like, I'm the best. You know, I'm the best. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to punch you right in the mouth and we're going to win this ball game. That's what I feel when I see him. And I think the biggest thing with confidence is a confident man like that puts in the work. A confident man that puts in the work trusts himself. When you trust yourself, your teammates trust you. 
That's how you win games late. That's how you do drives the way Mahomes has done drives. That's how you win three Super Bowls. That's how you went back to back for the first time in 20 years is that this guy's confident. And we all knew when it was 19, when it was, uh, what, what was it, 1919 or, or 22, 20, 20, when it was 22, 19, when uh, the, at the, at the first the, the, uh, in overtime, when, when the right, Niners right. scored, you knew when Mahomes got that ball, you just had the feeling they're yeah. going to go down here and score yeah. a touchdown and win it. You know, that's yep. the bottom line. So, I love it, man. I love the comparison to Jordan. You know, obviously he's got – he's only 28, dude. I had no idea he was that young. He's only 28. He's got That's what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah. yeah. He's done more than Jordan's done. He's done more than Brady's done. I mean, you can't – he's uh, – I don't know about that, dude. That's not true. No, at his – at that age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't – Okay, did, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna... At that age. At that right, age. Right, right. So, and and one, one, one thing about Brady, though, bro, Tom Brady – for the way he took care of himself and the way he was able to age and recover. I mean, dude, he retired because he's like, all right, I'm, I'll yeah. retire. Yep. He wasn't retired because he was done. Mm-hmm. He could have played probably three more years, dude, with the way he takes care of himself, the way he eats, the way he sleeps, the way he recovers. So, like, what's interesting to me is I see Patrick Mahomes at 28. Stu? Yes, Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes at 28. Does he, you know... Because he, uh, obviously, too, I think one of the biggest things to change last night was the way he scrambled at the end. He oh. had the one fourth down, he, you know, got a n- nine-yard run, you know, and, and he scrambled twice to get the first down. And it was just one of those things where, like, I don't think you're going to stop this guy. But can he stay healthy like Tom Brady did to get a chance oh, to yeah, win it, seven Super Bowls? Oh, and here's, uh, the, here's uh, the other thing. Here's the other thing. Andy Reid better stay with him, bro. Yes. Because Andy Reid – is 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 an absolute no, legend. They're going for can, the three peat. They're going for the yeah. three peat together. There's no reason for him to leave. There's no reason for Andy Reid to leave. He's having he's in some analyst said it on a, one of the NFL shows. He's having too much fun. Like, give it one more shot and go for three peat. Guess what? If they go four and twelve next year, that's not changing Andy Reid's legacy. It's just not. It, it will no. be probably first of all, they're not gonna do that. They could win again next year. Go for the three peat ha- right off into the sunset after that. And yeah, but no, but, but, I'm saying it, ever. but I'm saying if we're talking about Brady winning seven, he won six with Belichick. Right. I Randy Reed is that kind of coach, like a Belichick type, yeah. type coach. Will he stick around long enough to get the six with Mahomes? I don't think he will, just because I think he is more of a an extrovert than Bill Belichick was. And I think he has a lot on the other side yeah. that he would like to do. Like, I don't think Bill Belichick's sitting there waiting right now to go, oh, man, how am I going to get on TV? Am I going to do games or am I going to go into a studio? I don't think he gives a crap about that. And I don't think he'll do that. But I think Andy Reid could actually become one of the best NFL analysts when he's done playing. So, like, he... He's just, you know, he does great commercials. He's very funny. He's kind of like the Manning brothers in that way. Like Andy, right, right. like your cute, your, your, you know, your cute uh, friend, uh, older dad of your friend or the grandfather. Yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. Hanging out with. So he has, he has so many options after this that I think, I don't think he'll chase the numbers the same way like a Bill Belichick will chase the numbers. Yeah. Time. Yeah, that makes sense, dude. He reminds me of, of a Terry Francona. That kind of like he's like he's friendly, you know. But but I but I do you do see Andy Reid's the boss too. Like you even from Kelsey, I know I know Kelsey and him oh, kind of went at got, it. And, got, yeah, knows, nice knows, knows, knows which which is great because they do love each other. I know yes, that they do. Like, They're great. I, I, just seeing, um, just knowing that, like, I think Kelsey's also a little scared of Reid as far as like. That father yeah, figure, that, that like lead, that the, leader, like if, if if Reed got back in his face, Kelsey would have been like, "Whoa!" But I, I but he has the friendship with with Reed. That fine line, that's a tough line. To, that's a tough line as a leader right. to, to to ride because you're. Hey, I'm your friend to a point, but don't disrespect me. Then all of a sudden, I become your dad. You know what I mean? You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like yeah. that yeah. fine line. I think Andy Reed does a great job of, of that fine line, and I love that too when he's like. What does he say? Like, cheese. Yeah, you know? it's so cool, right? Yeah, so I love cool. that, dude. Yeah. 
By the way, going back to the Brady comp, I was going to make a Brady comp, not with Mahomes, but with Brock Purdy. Dude, he was Mr. Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't recruited big time in high school into college. Man, and I'll give him credit for one thing. I don't care what your religion or whatever is. This guy's faith. All he talks about is his faith in, in God and his family and doing the right thing and working really hard. A lot of like what I see in him or a lot of like kind of like the tools you talk about, yeah. your breakthrough pro and stuff like that about like mental mindset. And just because everybody doubted me doesn't mean I'm not I'm not that guy. I can right. be better. Brock Purdy put himself. He's been getting, by the way, he's getting crushed these past five, six weeks. Like crushed like he's a, a game manager all the football players that i worked with and uh, and everywhere else on all the other networks are like how are you putting this guy down do you realize a how good he is and b what he has had to overcome to become a starting quarter first of all to make a team mr Irre right. irrelevant <laughs> doesn't make the team yeah, they, mr Irrelevant is the, the last pick of the draft right the last pick of the draft yes <clears throat> does not make the team oftentimes that's one so you make your team practice squad. Nope. I'm going to be the third string. Dude, this, th th they had two other quarterbacks, two other quarterbacks who had started in games before last season. I got to give Shanahan credit too. Like they were like, you know what? We're just going to ride Purdy. He's pretty good. He's not just this guy that's getting lucky. He is legit. And to all of your stuff, dude, case, like, not being down the mental performance like stay positive keep yourself in the right mindset like have your faith in whatever you believe in i, I yeah. think he reminds me actually a lot of all about you a, a lot yeah. of like you too you know you weren't well recruited yeah. you weren't drafted high. yeah no it's a, no i believe it. i relate to his story big time man and also too i relate to his faith like when you're playing with a higher purpose all of a sudden you're dangerous if there's a greater meaning for you on the other side of that, you know, on the other side of that that uncomfortable zone, you'll fight for it. And when I look at Brock Purdy, I'm like, he plays for a greater meaning. He plays for his faith in, in God. And, and, and you know, he talks about, hey, listen, I'm going to go out there and let it all hang on the line. I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to take care of business. And, you know, I heard a saying one time, you know, that humans are in, the, are in the action business and God's in the results business. You know, and when you hear Brock Purdy talk, he's like, I just surrender it. I go out there and play the best I can, work as hard as I can. I I, I play to serve those guys on on that 49er jersey. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I think that makes him a dangerous quarterback because he plays free and loose. He gets after it. He makes some, he, you know, he'll take some chances on a few throws where, where, he's ha where he has to thread the needle. And I just think there's a there's just a big confidence there in, 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 in his purpose. I, I, I totally agree with that. All right. And now the last point. I will say this right now. First of all, at the time we're recording this, I don't know the results, but I think this might be the highest rated rated live television event of I all. I wonder why. Exactly. That's what I'm Dude. getting to. I am all in on Swift and Kelsey. Let's go. I'm like, God, I hope everything works out. I don't know if they don't break up. I'm sitting there last night. I'm <laughs> in my 40s. I'm a sports fan. I've worked in sports <laughs> my whole life. And Jess is in there cooking. I'll tell you all the stuff she made yesterday, yeah. which is great. But she's in the kitchen, but she can watch. And I go, every time she's looking away, I'm going, Jess, they just turned its tail and looked its tail. Let me rewind it. Let me rewind it. Did you see what tail and just did? And I was like, all oh, in on it. Did you see her chug a beer? Did you see her yeah. chug a beer? I heard about it. No, I didn't see it. Oh, my God. It. Yeah, well, when you're when you're with Jason Kelsey, you're probably gonna chug a beer in that box. Travis Kelsey. I mean, Tra oh well, no, no, no. With Jason no, Kelsey when you're with in Jason the in the box, you're probably gonna chug a beer. His brother. Oh, you know? oh you're right. Good call. You're absolutely right. For, who's also awesome? Kelsey's yeah. family's awesome. His Tim mom's in, yeah. Seems awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's all. Dude, I, 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 I had a question. I had a question too because my daughter Carly's got an eighty-seven. Kelsey jersey on. Her friend Liza's got an 87 Kelsey jersey on. One's red, one's white. I'm like, this is incredible. And they, my daughter's never watched a football game, dude. Ever. Right? Ever. ever. You're watching football with your daughters, bro. 
Dude, okay. it was incredible. Locked in. And I must admit, I, I really wanted to just see a good game. But towards the end, I was like, I want my daughter to be happy. <laughs> you want to So I want to be happy. So I want to see the Chiefs win. Yeah. Because, dude, when Mahomes threw that ball and Carly turns me goes, Dad, did they win? Did they win? I go, yeah, they won. They're like, dude, they jumped around like like they won the Super Bowl. Isn't and I was like, this is incredible. incredible. This, this is the Taylor Swift effect, dude. The Swifties dude. are real. Incredible. It's incredible. It is absolutely. First of all, people are tracking her journey from, like, Asia to here. No, like yeah, Santa she's in Japan. Claus. Like Santa yeah. Claus, right? Like, What is that app? You probably had it. Oh, dude, I have. Oh, yeah, dude. And bring Santa Claus would come on. I'm like, dude, you good, kids need to go to bed. Santa Claus is in, uh, is in Scranton right now. Like, look at what it seems like. Yeah, and I'm like, to him. And yeah, like, yeah. Oh, dude, they bolt up to bed, too, man. Santa Claus. Yeah. I feel oh, bad dude. you're lying, but it works. Yeah, you know what? Santa Claus works even now. Like, Jess, when we have our niece of my over, she's four years old. <laughs> like, just, just like, you know what? I'm calling Santa Claus right now and telling him you're being a bad girl. <laughs> This girl straightens up like a like an arrow, dude. I'm telling, you. she does it literally, literally middle of June. All right, Santa, uh, Amaya's getting cold, and Amaya's like, they're like it's the pupil. Anyway, dude, dude, dude. I'm all in on this. The Kel, the, the, I'm, I'm all in, dude, dude. I am all in. And dude, they listen, man. Listen, listen. They love each other. You can see it at the end of the game. Yeah. The way she hugs them and they kiss. And it's all good, man. Why, why, why can't we all? Just love it. Why like, can't we all just, you know, lean in and go, this is really cool. Let them, let them have their moments. You know what I mean? We're too. And I tell you what, tell you what, dude. Taylor Swift, dude. We're two grown men sitting here. But dude, why not, dude? She's can't a stud. She's kiss. a big pro. Hey, Chinch, she's a billionaire, dude. She's an, <laughs> um, she's a mogul. She's, doing. A mogul. She's, one of, she's one of the greatest song, singer songwriters yeah. in music history, dude. History. Like, she's not just like, hey, Taylor Swift is, no, dude, she's a billionaire. That means she's a smart businesswoman, and I love what she's doing. I don't know. I, I, I'm enjoying it, man. I'm enjoying it, and good for them. Good for them for enjoying. It. And I'm enjoying it for my daughter too. My daughters That's are watching I'm the team. They're watching the team yeah. because of Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Incredible. I cannot wait to see these ratings. Number one, number yeah. two. Uh, wait. I was just gonna say something about. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. We're not seeing the next Michael Jordan and Patrick Mahomes. Maybe we're seeing the next Michael Jordan and Taylor Swift. How's that? Ooh, interesting. Interesting. That's deep. That makes no sense. That makes no, that makes no sense. Did Shara just, just call me out in the background? I thought I heard her go, no. No, I was saying, like, she's like Marilyn Monroe and... Um... Uh, Joe DiMaggio. She's like Marilyn Monroe, oh, Marilyn Monroe oh. and Joe DiMaggio. But it's really kind of flipped, because... I... Who was bigger, Marilyn Monroe or Joe DiMaggio? I, oh, there's the greatest line ever. I, I always quote this is when uh, Marilyn Monroe was singing. I think it was at the JFK thing where she sang "Happy Birthday." Oh yeah, 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 Mr. yeah. She came back to DiMaggio and goes, "Joe, do you have any idea what it's like to have thirty five thousand people just looking at you?" And he goes, "Every night, baby." <laughs> so. I mean, but okay. Marilyn, but in the grand scheme of things, I think Marilyn Monroe was way bigger than Joe the Magic. You think so? Yes. Wow. Taylor Swift is way bigger than Travis Kelsey. Can we admit that? No offense to Kelsey, but come uh, on. You know, yeah, come on. Dude. Travis, Travis, I mean, Taylor Smith. I mean, Taylor Swift's huge. Dude, I, one last point. The, the Kelsey had a horrible first half. Horrible, dude. And this is a good... A uh, quick thing to end on with you, like you're zero for three with three strikeouts, but you come up in the ninth, you know, with the bases loaded down by two runs, right? So I think Kelsey's first half was the equivalent of that in baseball, where yeah, he had, he had one. I think he had one target, zero catches, or one target, one he had catch, one catch, one catch, yeah, yeah. And then I'm telling you, in that second half, and so and then he yells at Andy Reid, and it's like, well, he was like, get me the ball. Wait, well, think about this too, bro. Think about this. I know you don't put this into your head as an athlete, whatever, but let's just say, you know, he's he's not doing well. He fights with Andy Reid, okay? Then you go into halftime. You're losing. You're going to lose the Super Bowl. Right. His, I would argue the pressure on him was more than anybody else in that game in the second half because let's just say he didn't have a good game. He never had another catch. Let's just say they lost. It's all going to be... Oh. 
The Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift, exactly. Taylor Swift, uh, yeah. women are the root of all evil. Yeah, nightmare. Like he had the weight of the world. Yeah, no, oh, that's man. why I'm, I'm. That's why I'm glad he won it. So we didn't have right? to hear that crap right there. I, I, I was like, please don't right? hear that junk. But dude, how about when Kelsey at the end? Then I got to go up to this comment. Yeah, I Kelsey go. at the end got the ball going into the end zone, and that DB came up and he lit him up, dude. Oh, put his Kelsey put his shoulders down and crushed him. That guy's that guy's shoulder is still in Las Vegas, and he's on the way home to San Francisco. That's incredible. That was, and by the way, I'll give, give the guy credit. He put a good lick on Kelsey, but oh. the, the meat, the meat, dude. Was meat. Dude, Kelsey that was dude, ready for. That dude's dude. arm is literally still in, at the LA Bay playing blackjack right now. Crushed him, man. Oh my God. All right, All right brother. Good, 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 good start. Good start to Monday, man.